welcome Ken onto the Run Thrive Survive podcast. Ken, how are you doing today? Doing great. Thank you so much for having me today. Awesome. I'm super happy to have you on today's podcast. But before we get started and kind of dive into our topic, I want to go ahead and give you, or I want people, go ahead and give a, a little bit of a background about yourself. Yeah. So basically, I've been a financial advisor for a decade. And obviously, that's not why I'm here today. So in the midst of that very conservative career, I um, had an epiphany where I basically realized that I was living my life on repeat and that I felt like I would plateaued. And I spent five years creating my, like learning the techniques to take myself to the next level because I'd had an experience on vacation where I like all of the things that I worried about and all the thoughts in my head disappeared. And it was a very freeing experience. And I literally, again, searched for that for years and now get to live that every day. Can we dive in what you mean by all the thoughts escaped your head? What, what, elaborate on that one a little bit. Yeah. So the best way to describe it is, you know, all the thoughts that you have constantly that are telling you, you have to do this, you have to do that. Um, this isn't right. That was wrong. I can't believe you said that. Right. It never stops. Um, mm -hmm. Also, all of those stops, all of those thoughts stopped. And all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, I'd like, I'm actually fine. Like, everything's good. And it was a very freeing experience and it was just amazing. Um, but then I came home obviously and real life came back and I felt stuck again and was like, oh my God, I've experienced that before. So I know it's possible. Like, how do I get back there? So, okay. So I just want to like kind of elaborate on this a little bit because this is fascinating. So I talk a lot on the podcast because a lot of people listening have most likely that regular eight to five. Well, it's probably like eight to six now because people don't work normal hours. It's way more hours than ever we've ever worked, but you know, nine to five, eight to five job. And they're on that hustle bustle schedule. They're on that stress now about every little thing. And you're saying this vacation, that it was the only thing that kind of triggered this idea that, you know, we're well, not idea, but the fact that you didn't think about anything. Were you doing anything prior to that? Were you doing any meditations? Were you doing any like growth mindset work or did it just happen on the vacation? I mean, I'd like to say that I had some pre-work going into it, but it literally just happened. Wow. Like that's actually fascinating. I, I, I remember the exact moment it was just sitting there and it all kind of, like I said, just disappeared. And I was like, Oh my God, like, this is the most freeing experience ever. Um, and again, it was just like a kind of a glimpse of in, into that clarity, if you will, and that stillness. And that's what started the whole path forward. So what did you do from there? Did you go back to your job or how did, what was the path you took? Yeah, no, everything was the same when I got home, right? All the same yeah. requirements, all the same obligations. Um, and I didn't know even where to start really, right? So it was like a lot of work for me just trying different things and trying to figure out kind of what was next and just continually moving forward and figuring it out as I went, right? So that was the big thing for me is just get moving because if you sit there and just overanalyze everything, you probably won't get it done. But right. if you start building momentum, you can gain momentum. But did you know so, what you were working towards? Did you have an idea or did you just know you had to go in a whole different direction? Because sometimes we just have that feeling where we're like, I don't know what I need to change, but I need to change something because I'm burning out. Yeah. I mean, so I really love what I do. I still do that. So it wasn't like my job was a problem. It was mostly the thoughts and the judgments and the beliefs I had about myself and what I was doing. So I spent most of the time trying to figure out how to quiet my mind so that I could see what was actually occurring opposed to what I thought was occurring. So looking deeper into this, when you quieted your mind on the vacation, it wasn't about your work and your everyday work tasks. It was about opinions and self-beliefs you had. Is that correct? Correct. So what, how did you, okay. So going from there, how did you set on that journey? Were you able to establish a way to find it while you're not on vacation then? What was that? What, where did you go from there? What was that story? Yeah. So, I mean, I tried, like I said, I tried everything. So I read every book on personal development, 
from the classics to the new ones. Um, and about pretty early on in it, I heard about meditation and was like, I'll give that a try. And started meditating probably six months into my journey. And it was interesting. So my first meditation, right, you go and everybody has this belief that you're going to have no thoughts. It's going to be super peaceful. And that was not my first experience at all. Uh, between all the noise in my head, and this is, again, the first time I've ever meditated, um, where I was being taught outside, the gardener decided to start like mowing the lawn and using the leaf blower at the exact same time I was trying to meditate. <laughs> Why not? So, that's, a, that's the perfect yeah. time for them to start that stuff up. <laughs> Exactly. I was like, oh, perfect. This is like how my life goes, right? Like, of course it wouldn't be ruined by something else. Like, um, but it was still a great experience and I've meditated ever since. Okay. So walk us through this. Cause a lot of people listening, I think are kind of on the fence. Like you were before maybe your first time where it's like, I've heard about meditating. You're supposed to clear your mind. And in my life, that's just not possible. How did you get yourself to sit down that first time? And other than the leaf blower and the lawnmower, how did you keep yourself going? Because obviously your first time was not the best. How did you say, all right, this, this maybe wasn't what I pictured, but I'm going to move forward with it. Yeah. So I had gone to a facility where you have an instructor teaching you like a practice. And so you have somebody there being like, okay, here's your mantra, repeat it. And then they're basically like, right. we'll keep time. We'll let you know when to stop. So I was kind of, because of that accountability, I knew I was going to be sitting there for the 20 minutes. Oh my gosh. It was 20 minutes. Yeah. I was thinking like five, you know, how like headspace <laughs> and all these like calm apps or these yeah. apps that you have is like, oh, five minute meditation. I'm like, I can squeeze that in 20 minutes is a long time to sit still and meditate in your own head. I mean, 20 minutes twice a day, too. Wow. And you were going to a class 20 minutes twice a day. Yep. For the first, I think it's four days you go. Wow. That's a lot of meditation. Now, okay, so what made you sign up for that? What was that key? It was the vacation, the key, like the key change that made you sign up for it? Or did it take you a while? How long was that lag from vacation? I, like I said, I think it was about six months because I, I was reading a lot of books and in one of the books, it did mention like the benefits of meditation. And since I was already moving forward on so many other things too, I was like, oh, I'll add that too and see like what it's about. And uh, yeah, like I said, it was a, it's a great experience. And even though it was really loud and I had a lot of thoughts, I still had the benefits of that quietness once I was done. So for me, I knew that it was starting me on that path back to that stillness that I had experienced. And that if I kept at it, I could live in that place all the time. Now, from your first time to where you are now, let, let me first ask you, where are you now in meditation? Do you meditate still twice a day for 20 minutes or does it look different from the first time that you meditated? Um, you know, you're the first person to ask me that question. Um, <laughs> it's a little different. So when I first started, and I'd say for the first year, I was very diligent, right? Like I was like, it was a habit, like all the time. Now I still meditate every day. Um, but I feel like the benefits and the stillness throughout the entire day. Whereas before I needed that additional meditation, if you will, to, to quiet my mind again, because it was so loud. If that makes sense. No, that makes a lot of sense. Do you make it a habit then in the morning? Are you one of those people that like wakes up in the morning and you really just, you know, you start to meditate or do you have to do it before the day? Do you do it at the end of the day, in the middle of the day? How does it, that, how does that work for you? What's best for you? Yeah. So you probably have a nice like morning routine too, right? Yeah. So it is definitely part of my morning routine. Um, so I meditate first thing. And then if I'm feeling a lot of anxiety or stress during the day, or if I felt like a lot of overwhelm, you know, I'll do the second meditation around like noon, one o'clock, just to get through the rest of the day. Um, so those are the, usually the two times. Now, I, I have to ask you, so a lot of us, because I focus a lot on habits here, how did you, 
What was that journey like when you were starting the first meditation? What was that journey like going through it? Did you ever find it hard to focus? At what point did you realize this is working for me as you went through it? So I, I agree with you. You got to build the habit. Yeah. So, are so that is extremely important. Yeah. Um, so like I said, I just got in that habit of first thing in the morning, start meditating, whether I wanted to or not 20 minutes and just kind of go through that. Um, even today, like everybody thinks you sit down, so you meditate for five minutes, right? It takes me 10 right. minutes just to quiet my mind to be able to meditate for the last 10 minutes. And I've been meditating for years. You know, some people are like, oh, I meditate for five minutes. I'm like, you probably haven't even seen the benefits because you're still thinking like a lot in the five minutes, right? Or listening to whatever's going on. Whereas if you learn a mantra meditation, right? And you do the 20 minutes, for me, it still takes me 10 minutes to like settle in and like unwind from like whatever I was doing before and then enjoy the benefits of the meditation. Now, when you... I'm sure people ask you this all the time because, you know, if, if anybody says they meditate and meditating means something different for everybody, like I just said, like you do it 20 minutes, that blows my mind. I do five to just close my eyes, think about my goals, and then I keep going, right? And I call that meditation. When you, I guess, what was my question? So when you meditate, what advice would you have for somebody who wants to start, who's somebody who's on the edge and who's actually like, I don't know what kind of meditation is best for me. How did you find what was best for you? And what would you tell somebody else looking into it? Yeah. So my normal advice would be similar to yours. Kind of start with a five minute app that's free, you know, and like start seeing some of the benefits of that quietness. And then when you're ready, you know, learn a mantra based meditation. So we have one on our site, we teach it. I'm a certified instructor. Um, so we give people their personal meditation mantra, and then teach them to do the 20 minutes and keep time the first time, right? So they'll actually do it. Um, and then build that into a habit. That's awesome. Wow. And I mean, so kind of going through it, you had mentioned something that you help people go from thriving to surviving. Is meditation kind of based in what you do and help people with? Yeah. So meditation is, so I guess we can go back for a second. Since I still do my normal job, right? When I would go out and talk right. to people in like the normal uh, environment I would be in, people would notice the difference. And they'd be like, what are you doing? What's different? And so because I kept getting that question, that's why I decided to create the core stillness to success and teach people basically how to be still and then turn that stillness into more success in their life and really right th thrive. And so it was from all the feedback I was getting from people of like, hey, what are you doing? How, what can I do? Like, how can you teach me? That was kind of the impetus to creating the course to really take people from this chaotic, stressful life that we all live in, especially right now, oh, and yeah. allow them to recenter and move forward. Is this also because I mean, you still have your regular job and I'm assuming you're still helping being a financial analyst and everything and helping people in the financial world. Are is this tied in together or is this a whole separate thing that you're doing? It's pretty much a whole separate thing. And how, other than meditation, how did you jump into that? Like what benefit did you see this versus financial planning for the rest of your life for people? Well, since I guess to still do both, I guess it's because I knew I could do both. Um, but I get much more enjoyment and feel like I have more of an impact changing people's life. So... What are some of the success stories that you've seen with people with through meditation, through um, your program? What what kind of success and benefits have you seen people get? Yeah. So, I mean, I like to talk about, so everybody gets very different success. So I have some people that are very stressed. They're like, oh my God, I just feel better, right? Like the anxiety has gone. Um, so I used to have major OCD as well. Right. And like, I don't have that anymore. Like, it's just, it, it is what it is. Um, and then I've been able to turn it into making substantially more money than I was making before. 
in my finance job, just because I was more clear, more present, and I was actually listening to people as opposed to listening to the thoughts in my head. And yeah, right. It's very helpful. <laughs> it's very helpful when we're in the service industry, but I get it because sometimes you are thoughts in your head and you're just like, oh, I don't know what they just said. I guess I'm just going to have to kind of, you know, gloss over something and then move on to the next subject. And I hate to say it, but everybody does it. And it wasn't until, you know, you grow up and you realize that adults do this all and you're like, oh, well, I've been dealing with this my whole life. What? What? How's that happen? So exactly. I want to ask and kind of bring in, because you have written some books, right? What were your books about and how did they impact people's lives? Yeah. So I guess both the books and the course all comes down to your routine comment earlier. So I built them into my, my daily routine and that's how I was able to accomplish them. Um, so the first book I wrote, Get There, Chart Your Course to Financial Abundance and Live the Life You Desire. I, love it. Um, I wrote it at the same time I was learning to meditate and everything like that. And it was more just taking so many people, let me rephrase this. So many people say they want to write a book and never do. And so it was like a goal of mine to be like, okay, can I actually write this book? Right. And so like being able to see that through and like create it and get it done was very important to me. And at the same time I was writing it, I was learning how to sail. So the analogies are taking basically financial ideas and equating them with sailing. So it's more real world for a lot of people. Sailing. How did you get into sailing? How did, how did that tie into everything? I told you, I was just going full speed on everything at the same time. I love this. <laughs> I love this. Like yeah. I, you just open a new box every time with every question. <laughs> yeah. So literally sailing, I was like, so I live in on the beach and people are always sailing. And I was like, I really like the water. I have powerboat. I like to learn how to sail. So I signed up for a, a class and then I, I sailed like 250 hours the first year that I learned. Like it was just all about it. Wow. How, I guess, how many days is that? 250 divided by 24. That's, oh my gosh. That, I'm assuming it wasn't straight. It was sporadic across the year. Correct. Wow. Now, how did you, how did you tie that in, in your book? How does that, how does that even go with anything? Um, so it goes with a lot because in sailing, right, you have an idea of where you want to go, but right? The winds, the current, everything else is always changing. So you're constantly adjusting. Um, so that was like one of the things like people think, right, from where you are today to your goal, whether it's finance or anything, right, it's a straight line. But really, you're going to be constantly making adjustments and course correcting to get to your goal. Um, so that was one of them. Uh, also in sailing, you basically need to know where you're going and have a chart from where you are to where you want to go, right? And like know the steps. Uh, so we, same thing with financial planning, right? You need to know kind of what the goal is and what that looks like so you can start moving towards it. So, no, I would, I mean, unless you're like Christopher Columbus and just decides he wants to sail across this weird world and end up somewhere. It, it's hard. It's hard to find where you want to, or what dest destination you want to end up at. Now, what about the book, um, live the life you desire? What was that about? And how is that helping people? So I think, and you might agree with this, most people don't know what they want. Absolutely. So it's hard to live the life you want if you don't know what that looks like. So in the book, we just outline, and again, in the course, same thing, really take time to people to understand, like, what are their core values? What, is, what brings you happiness and joy? Like, what are those things that are important to you? And then how do you bring more of those into your life so that even if everything doesn't change and nothing's changing really, but what's in your head, you know what to look for and you can bring more happiness into your life. How, what did that process look for you personally? Was it something that you had to sit down and do, or was it something that you just noticed over time? I definitely needed to sit down and do it. So, so the, you're it helps with the structure. Right. I just think that some people need structure. And so to have like questions that are kind of keying in you, your thoughts and reflection to what's important and like listing it out and then seeing it in front of you 
And then you can see like the themes and the ideas that like resonate across multiple years or experiences and kind of identify those as like the key factors for you. What other ways do you, could you recommend to somebody? Cause some people are not structured and, and we know that like, I'm a structured person with you. I need to see it on paper. I need to see it in a nice clean sheet, but some people, they are out there and just I'll figure it out when I get there. How do you think, is there another method or is it literally just, I'll get there when I get there. We'll see where I go. Well, it's a good question. My initial thought is if you don't know where you're going, wherever you go is where you're going to be. That's um, very true. So if you, if you want to identify where you actually want to end up, you should take some time and figure it out. But that doesn't mean like sit and list it. It could be just asking the, yourself the question, like, what do I want? And then whether, however you creatively want to look at that and answer that question for yourself is how you should, but you should still like take the time to reflect on the question. Absolutely. I think one of the best things, cause I mean, we've all struggled with this at, at some point in life. I mean, we struggle with it consistently. It's not even just a one time and one and done kind of deal, but the biggest thing that I heard piece of advice that helps people, I think is, you know, you may not know what you want. Like you just said, most of us don't know what we want, but maybe you know what you don't want, you know, like write down a list of things you don't want and then go from there type of deal. Now, in these books, do you incorporate, you know, going back to meditation, do you incorporate how, you know, maybe reflecting, like maybe not even calling it meditation, but reflecting on your thoughts and your desires? How does that help? Do, do you touch base with that one in your books? Mostly on the course. That's why the course is called Stillness to Success, right? So it's more than meditation. It's creating that mental stillness and finding out, you know, how to quiet your mind so you can experience stillness throughout the day and really hear that small voice or that little voice in your head that's telling you what you actually want, as opposed to all the noise that is constantly bombarding you. What does the course look like? Do you, is it online? Is it somewhere where you go? How, the, how do you walk through the course? Yeah. So the, the course is online, stillness to success.com. It's a virtual course, but uh, we're adding coaching to help people really take it to the next level. And we teach the personal mantras uh, live. How often can you sign up for it? Is it like a one in like one time um, throughout the year or how does it all work? I guess what is uh, stillness to success other than what you've just described it? Like, how do you do it? What do you go through everything else? So I created basically an online course that you can take at any time because I knew that if I try to structure it too much, most people wouldn't get to it. And again, right. I really want to have the impact. So sign up at any time and we teach the mantra meditation throughout the year. Um, and then, yeah, you can use the course content at any time. And then we're going to start adding live retreats next year. So we haven't talked about it yet but I'll throw it out there just to give you one more box to open up. Yeah. Um, so for the last three years, I've spent prolonged time in silence. And so we are going to start teaching five day silent retreats. What would that look like? This is a new box to open up. <laughs> that, I, I've never um, heard of a silent retreat. Does, is it, I guess you're going to have to explain this, but I've never heard of this before. Yeah, so it is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, so I literally go, and I just got back actually, five days in silence. Uh, I don't speak, I don't read, I don't write, I don't watch TV, don't listen to music, don't do anything, really, for five days. Where do you go for that? Is that an area in the U.S. or is that is that a retreat spot? I'm I'm I've, there's so many questions now. Yeah. Um, so I've gone to different locations. Usually it's somewhere like kind of secluded, but it's in a group setting. So there's a hundred of us there. Um, and the group really makes it a better experience because there's like, it changes the environment and you get to see other people kind of going through the same thing you are. So I'm, I, I guess it would be similar to like running a marathon, right? Towards the end, you get to like use the energy of everybody else to push you forward. Right. Uh, so the same thing for silence. 
Now, I guess, okay, so what does a day like that look like? Like, what do you do? Because you're not talking to each other, I'm assuming. Like, how, what does that look like? So the first time, every year I get, I've done it, it's different. Um, this last time I went, I would say it was like the best experience so far. And literally I didn't do anything. I just sat and like reflected and just kind of sat and vibrated to like what was going on around me, kind of did whatever I wanted. That is so hard to like wrap my head around, but that's so awesome. Um, can I ask where these retreats are or are they kind of, I guess, remote locations? Like where are they? Yeah. So all of the ones I've done have been in California, basically in central okay. California. Um, I'm still looking for the location of the one that we're going to start doing. Um, so yeah, but it's, again, it's just, you got to be a little away from people kind of in nature. So you can walk around, you can hike, run, right. And just do other physical activity, but not have all the noise. So, yeah, so you're still not, allowed you to, to do dark. things. You're still allowed to do things. It's just, everything's more, you're not speaking. You're not adding all these other environmental stimuli into your brain. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, if you wanted to run, hike, walk around, just sit, people do all that. The idea is to not really like, I don't know, have a lot of stimulus, like you said, or like attached to like a book or something that you would do normally and really just find that mental stillness. I'm just, I, how did this come about? Like who's created it? What's the history on them? So I'm actually going to try to write a book on the history of silence because I feel like it's so new to people. But as you read like old literature from, you know, hundreds and thousands of years ago, they talk about silence and like, right, be still. And like, it's a reoccurring hey. theme. I think it's just gotten lost in all the noise that we have today. Yeah, no, there's, that's a huge thing where, I mean, I, I'm in a, I, well, I used to live in the mountains where it was super silent and it wasn't until I moved to Florida where everything is so loud all of the time that I realized I missed the, like the silence of just the mountains and being in the woods and the hikes without anybody around and you can hear all the like leaves, the wind through the leaves and everything like that. So that is fascinating. That is a book that I cannot wait for you to write for yourself and everybody around you. Cause this is fascinating. Oh my gosh. Now kind of wrapping up the podcast, cause we're coming towards the end. I always ask people, and I think you're going to have a wonderful answer. Run your life is the motto, the mantra that I want to bring to everybody because I believe everybody should be able to run their life without in all these other, you know, being the puppet of life, without things controlling their lives that are out of their control. So what is it? What are the key things, the key habits, the key routines, um, including meditation, that help you run your life so life doesn't run you? That's a really good question. I'm going to have to listen to all the answers other people have given because that's right. It's everybody's like routine, basically. Oh, yeah. um, so I actually, as part of the Stillness to Success course, at the end, you get basically the journal that I use every day to structure my day. And it's a combination of a little bit of gratitude and like top goals for the day, um, journaling about how I want the day to go, what I want it to feel like, and what I feel that. I need to attract or like have come to me to help me move forward towards a goal. So not necessarily the goal itself, but like somebody or something like as an assistant to move me forward. It's your direction. It's like almost like your compass, just your little push forward. Exactly. I love it. Well, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast podcast today, Ken. If people would like to know more about your books, your program, everything in the silence book that's coming out, where can they find you? Yeah, they can go to kenclodoris.com. I'm sure there'll be a link below because it's really hard to spell. Absolutely. Uh, stillness to success.com. Uh, those are going to be the two places. And you can follow me on Instagram for uh, life behind the scenes. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today, Ken.